Jackson. Hey, you guys, Krim Jackson, you are live on the set, and I'm gonna take you around the world with me. Living my dream as a minimalist CEO, turning my clients' dreams into reality is what I do, showing that success is truly, truly for everyone. Hey, you guys, I've got new shows weekly. Stay tuned and live your best life. Best life. Best life. Best life. Ten reasons to get out and take a hiatus. By hiatus, I mean this. When I first started on this, I planned to be in abroad for one month. That was my goal. I had a round trip ticket. I was gonna see how it is, get away, get my energy back, revive because I was just down and out. It was the, the recession was just wiped me out, wiped my clients out. My major clients like AT&T, those guys outsourced thirty thousand jobs. But when I started to travel around. I realized, my gosh, they outsourced to freaking abroad. At that time, it was India. Now Philippines is killing the world and outsourcing call centers and BPOs. It was it's Asia. They're killing them. So then I got really a wind of it. So a number one, you guys, if you guys notice here real quick, is is because it's your right, you guys. At the end of the day, when it comes down to it, it is your right. As an American, it is your right. A lot of folks ask me abroad why I left. The states, and usually when they're asking me, it's because they think, "Oh, America is perfect. Why would you ever leave there?" It must be a negative reason, like, "Are you wanted?" or "Was there some drama?" or "Are you divorced?" or what? Something like that. They think something like that, and it's hard for me to explain to them. But now social media has done it for me. But it's hard for me to explain to them the number one reason I left the states is one, I grew up abroad, international family. I've had a passport since I was eight years old. If you guys are in America right now, especially if you're black in America right now. Get a damn passport. I think a hundred bucks, hundred fifty bucks. You got the passport. You got the passport ID. You can go to the post office. You can get it. Take a picture right there. That's what I did. Get out and travel. Europe, France, England. You guys, Asia. Go home to Africa. Black Americans. I lived in Nigeria. I lived in Africa, and went to school at American National School. You have got to visit. Even if you do not want to live there, no matter what you think, you guys. And back when I visited, they weren't doing this whole exodus thing. We went because in the states, we just couldn't, as a family, get our companies to grow. We couldn't find construction contracts. So my father went to Africa for a wedding. He took his tool bags, and then he got some contracts while he was there. Very similar to how I came to Asia. You don't realize this, America. Everyone needs to apply for a visa. Technically, Americans, and we travel the entire world. We do not need a visa. So, to us as Americans, there's no visa. You just go, and that visa can be for two weeks, or 21 days, or two months. It depends on the country you're going to. But you need to freaking get a passport. You need to travel because, as an American, with that passport, it is your right. You're paying 50%. Taxes in America, you know this. You have your employment tax if you're an employee, twenty, thirty percent. You have your sales tax in California. I think it's ten percent. So now you're thirty, forty, fifty percent already. Then you got sales tax, ten percent when you buy it at certain places. Then you've got your property tax, your car tax, your 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 death tax. All this stuff you're paying. You're paying so that you have the first world country. You're the great America, so wonderful. And the truth of it is, you're paying so that partly you have the right as an American citizen and passport holder to travel the world visa free. There is no issue. So why would you not do that? Number two reason I left you guys: white privilege versus black privilege. I was so sick and tired. Of living in a country where white privilege was everywhere, I got tired of it. First of all, if you don't know what white privilege is in America, then you are really, really a fool. Any black person who has a white friend—I don't care if that white dude's a, a wigger or a preppy ass white dude from Harvard—if you have white friends and you're rolling down the street, or if you're at a place, you know, and your friend knows that the police pull you over, the white dude better talk. I was in business. 
I had a white business partner because I knew my black ass walking into some companies, no matter where I wear a suit, Versace, Gucci, all you black folks, I don't care about the Escalade, that Mercedes. And then the day when it comes down to it, you know that the white dude walking in gets the deal. I did it three times, three times. I had white partners and or a white sales executive. And I tried it here in Asia, it backfired. But in the States, I had white partners and white sales executives because I knew that when my black ass walked into AT&T, for example, for the contract, they gave me the minority supplier contract. I had to be minority certified. I couldn't just walk in like a white dude and sell an ad or sell a campaign or sell marketing or sell a website to them. I couldn't do it. Once they saw me as a black American man or black man in general, they all of a sudden said, oh, the only reason we're gonna do business with you is for the tax break. So they call that minority supplier. Let me tell you this, a white dude can walk in, take them to Houston's or go have some steak at Ruth Chris Steakhouse, right? Talk the deal. He can open the company the next day, get the contract from the company, which has happened with the president. And then tomorrow he got the contract for a million dollars, $30 million, $100, whatever the hell it is, right? I realized that as a young guy and as a black American in the States, clean cut. I never had long hair dreads like this. I never had a beard. I was clean shaven. I wore suits and ties, Italian made every day loved my shoes. I had Gucci and Prada and, and all those Kenneco shoes before anybody in the States ever had them. I had the Trump ties. Yes, I did. I had it all. And let me tell you this too. I don't like Trump. I don't vote. I vote for Obama. But you know what? For 20 years, for business reasons, I've been a Republican in the States for 20 years. I don't vote Trump. I don't like, I'm not a Trump supporter, but I am Republican, a black American Republican. White privilege got on my nerves. A lot of folks back home, they wonder why I closed the company down, why I outsourced. I got sick of paying politicians. I got sick of paying white folks to be the front for me and taking half of my ass. So anyway, white privilege versus black privilege. Now you ask me what black privilege is and tell you this abroad. They actually, especially now with this crap in America, they like black Americans a lot more than white Americans right now. Here I can experience black privilege. I know that when I walk into a room, I can get the deal. Black people listen to me. It's actually an advantage being a black American abroad in business because they know we can bring it. There's no discrimination. It's reverse. I can get the deal faster than you. So in the end of the day, I feel the same way that white male privilege in America, they, that feeling of walking in and I know I can get the deal better than you. And the reason that we get the deals abroad better than anyone else if black privilege is different than white privilege. Whites get it because they're white. They may or may not be better than the black guy or the Asian guy or the woman, right? The white dude gets it because he's a white dude. Then the white dude outsources it or subcontracts it to us. So you would have a white dude in the house. He don't know nothing about construction at all, but he got the contract. This is how Trump makes his money. Trump don't have a freaking hammer ever. You ever seen Trump have a hammer in his hand? You ever seen Trump wear a hard hat? Come on, never. So who the hell is building all these equipments? Mexicans, Negroes, Asians, right? That's who's building it. So then the day, why not give the contract to the black dudes or the Asian con company? That's how it works in America. I got tired of that. But I realized immediately, even on Skype and on Facebook, Zooming, I hired my whole team. I got partners in the Philippines, you guys, 10 years ago, never met them, but we met on Facebook. That's it. They didn't see me and treat me differently because I'm black, which is what would happen in the States. They didn't do that. Maybe even they were more excited because I'm black. One president of a radio station here who they called me Antonio back when I first came, okay? Or they call me Jackson sometimes, right? My family name. And that can be white. So when I went to the meeting and he was late, he was like, you know, I had to kind of wait around, you know, like what's going on. And when he finally arrived, he was the head of the whole station. When he sat down, he finally met me. He closed the door for his executive office and he said, oh, my God, I'm so glad you're black.
you guys, that leads me to number three, you guys. I wanted to be in a racism-free lifestyle. And for a lot of black folks in America, a lot of Latinos or wherever you're at, you think that this is an unrealistic thing. I'm gonna tell you this. I have no idea about racism in the last 10 years. There is no racism here. So at the end of the day, if you don't know what that means, if you think that I'm crazy, then you know what? Think about where you're living then. Because racism-free, I want to live it. I sensed it. I saw it. I knew friends that worked abroad. I know friends that had companies abroad. I have white boys, you know, that I knew that lived on the beach in Long Beach, California, because their company was in India or in China or in, here in the Philippines. And they would tell me or they would see their posts online. I'm thinking, how the hell is a black dude hanging with the police abroad? We can't. We're scared of police in America, right? How is a black dude got the contract for this huge company? How is that possible? And I want to know I'm black, so I'm talking to you directly, but anyone who is discriminated against, women included, let me tell you this. If you are a minority, especially a black man, and you are an American, you are slightly successful. If you work a damn job and you pay your rent on time every month, if you have a small entertainment business or coffee shop or anything like that, and you are semi-successful, you can survive and prosper anywhere in the world. And let me explain to you why. What happens is this. This is where white men messed up. And this is the reason I think that many whites are hating blacks right now. And they're pushing it also on Muslims and Filipinos and Asians and all that crap. It's because you can survive anywhere in the world because what slavery did, the blessing of slavery, how they made us work, how they made us have nothing, live in dirt and be slaves in cotton fields and slaves to them, very much like Jews when they were slaves in Egypt. We knew all the skills. We know how to drive, irrigate, cotton, everything. We can work in the rain, sun. That's why we were great buffalo soldiers, right? Why we were the great military guys, because they they bred us to be the stronger, more strapping. So if you're a black American right now in America, you are the cream de la cream. You are the premium breed, okay? Even me as a successful business person, I knew that if I gave you this mug as a business person, right? I said, hey, here's a mug for your business. I knew that my mug had to be 10 times better than the white guy's mug for you to give me less than you would give the white guy for his mug. And that's how I did it. You thrive, you boom, because there's no shackles on you anymore. You're free, right? You're, there's nothing holding you back so you can thrive because there is no racism to hold you back. You are free. You guys, Number four was 50 to 100 times earnings. It's how I saved my company. It's how I believe that you can save your company because one, yes, it's cheaper to live here with dollars. And if you're a working class person, you can save money, go abroad, live cheap, and you can do that. And truthfully, a lot of white guys, that's what they do. But a lot of black folks, that's not what we do. We want to contribute. We want to help build. So if you go to Africa, for example, I think $1 equals around 100 there. Here, it's about 50. So somewhere outsourced, 50 to 100 times your money goes further. So if you're making $1,000 a month, two, $3,000 a month in America, abroad, you're rich. But it's hard to appreciate your American school education when you're in America. So that leads me to number five, you guys. When I went abroad, I realized that my American education, which of course is criticized as black folks, I love this picture here because all these black folks here in this room, if you're one of these black folks in one of these schools, understand this. If you have an American high school education, you can grow, you can boom, you can do very well. Because I'm gonna tell you this, in Asia, especially in the Philippines, right? To work at a McDonald's, you need to have a college education. If you wanna work at Jollibee, Child King, college education. If you wanna work at a hotel like the Hyatt, the Westin, the Crown Center, you know, if you wanna work at the hotel, you know, Motel Holiday Inn, you need to be a college graduate from a four year college. But America, you don't, right? America, you can be a high school graduate running McDonald's, general manager at McDonald's, manager, regional manager, right? They do not tell you that in America, at the end of the day, you guys, the education there is really good. The education in America, public school education, at least high school long, just only high school, that is a really, really good education. You can be a high school graduate in America and you can travel the world and you can be a millionaire abroad off that education because the ones you're dealing with in business, they're not savvy like you are. They don't know Excel, spreadsheets, Microsoft Word, business marketing, American business standards, quality standards. You don't know it. And that goes back to number four with the whole 50 to 100 times earnings. If you're making a regular job working at McDonald's 
after high school, before you go to college, travel, get your passport, go check things out. Because a lot of places, the American high school education is good enough for you to at least do business abroad and to live a lifestyle that you'd be living if you were a regular high school graduate in America. That was what changed it for me. That was what I saw. Number six, you guys, you may take it for granted in the States because you're struggling, especially for your minority business. You struggle. You don't know how you're going to make ends meet. You don't know how you're going to make your dream come to reality. But I saw a lot of people abroad and they were actually growing their business. They were actually enjoying their life. They really weren't, didn't have a business that was bigger than what I had in the States. Abroad, they had drivers and nannies and yayas and mansions and bodyguards. But at the end of the day, they were not making any more money than I was making, but I was living in America. So I couldn't really enjoy the lifestyle that I want to live. So number six, you guys, American business ideals in America, they keep you in the hood. I hated that. I hate it to this day. You can take nothing and make it into something. American, whether you're black or white, doesn't matter. We call it bootstrapping. We call it from zero to hero. We call it from shit to something, right? That ideal is very American. Everyone thinks you need money to start a business. That was it. You say, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. And they say, oh, I have no money. And they stop. They don't do anything. They think that it takes money to start a business. That is the ideal that they have here. The whole, it takes money to make money. That's an old ideal in America. We know that that's not true. The American business ideal is we know that you need brain. It wasn't about taking $10 and making $20. That's great. We can flip. That's another type of business. But initially to get started, it doesn't take money. And we know that as an American. So when we go abroad and we have a little bit of money, but our brain is right, we realize the American business ideal is really, really valuable abroad because many people that I consult with now, the basis of my consulting is that I know how to go from zero to 100. The American idea, especially for black Americans, allows you to succeed anywhere in the world. All you need, typically, because all I had was an idea with a little bit of soil on the idea, the most, you know, a seed of the idea, put some soil on it, put a little bit of water on it and get you a passport, get you a plane ticket and travel. That's what I did. But in the day, you guys, my number seven, you guys, I'm going to tell you this right now. So success is for everyone. We've been saying that for like 20 years. But the truth of it is, I'm going to tell you what a, the, the translation of that is an average nigga can do really good abroad. Hate saying that term. I know you guys know what I mean, but the average. So don't let whatever situation you had back in the States hold you back. Realize success is for everyone. You can claim it too. And one of the reasons I left the States, because I really saw a lot of my folks around me struggling. And realize when you leave the country, there's no racism for you anymore. So success is truly for everyone. It shows to everybody. A lot of the guys you see in business back home in the States, they were a teacher, you know, especially the white guys, right? They worked at a company. They were a corporate. They worked at a factory. They, they were in the military, things like that. But here, they're millionaires, multimillionaires. And they live well. They have a big house. They got a freaking butler. They got a nanny. They got a beautiful wife. And I'm going to tell you, it's because... They left and they changed their lifestyle. They live abroad and the average person can do really good abroad. So why not you? So within the day, you're going to be in the same situation. Number eight, you guys, for me, I left because there's a big false sense of success ideology out there. I, I really believe that there's a false sense of success. In America, this guy in this picture, you see this home right here? Success is that tie, that jacket, that car, that cufflinks. This is what you call success in America. This bling bling, this show off. But you know what? You don't need all this stuff to be happy. But you don't need a car. You don't need a suit to do it. You don't need any of that to do it. You don't need to buy name brand stuff. I'm not saying don't make money. What I'm saying is the false success ideology in America, I want to get away from. I didn't hate it. I was good at it. I look good in a suit. I look better than this brother right here does in a suit. I used to be a model for international mail, but in the day I got tired of the fact that I felt I had to have it. And when I was trying to go free and to free myself, the frustration that I had, the fear that I had was, can I make money and really grow without all this stuff? That is why I changed it. So the false success ideology, that's why I left. I want to be able to wear linen every day, not just for the white party. I want to be able to, to live on the beach, not go to the beach. I want to be able to live a simple life and be happy, not make money, then not be able to enjoy the simple things in life. 
In the military, I had to be clean shaven every single day. So it's hard for us to achieve success wearing flip flops and slides and crap and t-shirts and being a minimalist. We need to have all this crap around the house to show off to people that we're successful or they don't trust us. Savings versus expendable income. I know in the States, a lot of people, everyone says, oh my God, you know, save the money, save this. I don't have savings, you guys. I have crazy amounts investing. Me and my partner, we invest everything that we earn. If we make $1, we usually put it back in the company. I haven't been to a mall in, in months, of course, Corona included. I haven't bought a pair of Gucci's products in 15 years. I haven't bought a suit in 15 years. I haven't worn a suit in 10 years, eight years, unless it's specifically for an event or something like that. And more and more often, as I get more and more successful, I realize that suits are more and more not appropriate because everyone in the room is wearing slippers and flip flops and linen and all that crap. In America, we are really, really focused on savings. Expendable income is only a word that most people have no idea what it is. I'm going to tell you this. I left America because I wanted to have expendable income. I did not care about saving. Usually you're saving to spend anyway. If you don't have expendable income, then you need to freaking save. If you don't invest your money, then you need to save. But at the end of the day, I've been investing in business in my life for 20, 30 years. I would make money. I would go buy calling cards. I go make t-shirts with my logo on it, or I make uniforms, or I would go and get a website, or I would invest in product to sell, or I would go be paying to get gas in my car to go to a closing of a deal. Initially, people would say save, but I'm thinking save for what? You're saving money to go to freaking Hawaii. That's not savings. That's just, you're just holding on to it. But then I realized when I started traveling and meeting people that traveled, whatever job you had before Corona, or you have right now, or even a business you have, whatever you make gross income before taxes, before anything. Imagine if you could take all that money and you didn't need to spend it because you were living simple. So why not live simple now when you're young and your brain is fresh? Build something because my dream is that I eventually build something and by the time I retire, in about 15 years maybe, right? Maybe 20, hopefully something I'm doing right now. It makes me passive income without working. If you can keep your job, you guys, but then go live on a friend's couch for a while. Put all your crap in storage. I challenge you, work, keep that money. And you know what? The moment that you have money left over when you get your paycheck, the moment you don't even need to budget because you're not spending all your money, it will change your life. Number 10, you guys, here at Live on the Set with Kareem Jackson, you guys, is votes versus economic value, you guys. In America right now, the elections are coming up. So everybody's caring about what Negroes want and riots are happening because white some white folks are mad and black folks are jealous. And so that's why they're killing us in the streets and they're rioting right now. And all the politicians are trying to scamp around to get black votes and gay votes and Mexican votes and old people votes. They, America is very racist in good and bad ways. So they break everything down into race, gender, and the census. So when you're in America as a black American, really your value peaks when this voting season, they want your vote. Africa and the Philippines have huge amounts of money and effort invested into attracting the economic value of black Americans or Americans in general but especially now black Americans because the numbers are out. Black American consumer power is trillions and trillions of US dollars every single year. Americans who hear that, they hear black folks have jobs, our businesses, and they make it into a big number, which is trillions and trillions of dollars. So we went from slavery making no money to where now we get paid, and then now we have trillions and trillions of dollars of economic value and they turn it into consumerism. What they think, and they realize from outside looking in, the blacks especially, you are the ones who built America. Whereas abroad, when you travel abroad, the economic value is the key, and that's where we miss in the States. If you are a cook in the States, you can own a restaurant abroad, anywhere. Try it. 
And if you can't do it yourself, get a partner. See what you can do. And if you're working class, you have a job, try to get a job abroad. In the day, you guys, the value for blacks originally became voting because that's how the Democratic Party became huge. I told you before, I am not a Trump supporter, but I am a Republican. And I realize the votes are the big deal for them because that's how they get in office. So your value goes up and they want a black agenda. I, I really want to go somewhere where my vote wasn't a big deal. I don't vote here. I can't vote here. But my economic value is huge. I have a lot more respect for my economic value and I can support politicians and things like that and have more of an influence because my economic value is higher. Whereas in the States, the economic value is not a big deal. And again, I have a bonus for you, number 11. This is a personal reason. This is where I came from. This is my grandparents, you guys, right here. This is us. We came from this. This is how America looked back in the day. A lot of folks criticize Africa. They criticize the Philippines. Look behind these Negroes. That was America, y'all. So what are they talking about? Now it's a big city. Now there's a farm there. The ranch is beautiful and all the things are great because they weren't paying these Negroes. After that, they went here. I'm not going to forget where I came from. I'm very proud of where I came from. I know that if I hadn't come from this, I wouldn't be the strong person that I am now. I wouldn't be able to survive anywhere in the world like I do now. There's no slaves anymore in America technically, but you know what you're a slave to now? That. I wanted to be free. I wanted to be done with the stress. I wanted to be out of the situation. I did not want to be stuck in the situation I was in, you guys. I wanted to be free. And I knew that I couldn't do that in the States. And I don't mean the States is bad. I didn't criticize America. I love America. Beautiful country. Education is great. My friends back home and family are great. But the benefit to America, like I told you in the very beginning, our number one thing I told you was it's a right as an American to have a passport and to travel the world. I wanted to be free. I didn't want to be stuck there. And then here you're stressed out. You have no money. And so you're sitting up here stressed out because you really cannot have the money to go travel the world and see the world. You're too busy and stressed out just paying your bills every day. You can see what I mean. I wanted freedom. I busted my ass. I built the company, but I was stressed out because I had to keep busting my ass just to pay the bills. So that wore me completely out. Again, you guys, thank you again. I appreciate it. Remember, I'm Kareem Jackson. I help woke entrepreneurs, you guys. If you're woke and you're an entrepreneur, you can message me and I can help you to minimize your cluttered lifestyle, to outsource your business processes, to make more money and more profits. And also, I really help you to live the dream life you want to live by using tech like I'm doing to run your business. So keep that in mind. And again, cheers. And next hey, local small business owners, entrepreneurs, and celebrities. Shh. Hey, you guys, I've got a secret to tell you. Go get that promo. Check this out. Canco has a new website promo for $350. That's just 15,000 pesos. And your small business can have a fantastic website. You know how the guys are beating you out there, how they're getting customers, how they're online. Despite anything, they can keep going. They can still reach customers. People can still buy, see their stuff. Here, you guys, I've got the secret. They can still do it because they're reaching their clients online with their fantastic website. The promo, you guys, is just 15 thousand pesos three hundred and fifty dollars you can showcase your products and reach the world go get that